Welcome back to Mainstream Current. I'm your host, Drew Hoagland, and this is another episode of Me News for Me. News about Maine, for Mainers, from a Mainers perspective. Today, we're going to be talking about wind turbines, or more specifically, offshore wind turbines. Back in February, um, I'm reading an article now from February 20th, 2024, by the Maine Morning Star. Offshore wind is coming to Maine. Here's what we know. Governor Janet Mills announced Tuesday that Sears Island on the northern tip of Penobscot Bay would be the location of a new port. And that sounds exciting. Uh, We're getting into green energy. Oftentimes, Maine is the leader when it comes to setting precedent for the rest of the U.S. Uh, The sun rises first on Maine than it does anywhere else in the U.S. And I think that that has some truth to what Maine represents as a state, the way life should be. We hold on to traditional ideals that have historically proven to be beneficial. And then we get into other things like offshore wind turbines, where it seems like we're leading the way and we are setting a good example. But I don't know that we are. I was going to wait to make this video just because I wanted to do more research myself, but part of what I want to convey here on mainstream um, current is that I am not, uh, I, I'm not a professional journalist. I'm not a professional um, investigator. I simply have the same means that any of us have. I Google, I am on Twitter or X, I am... Uh, on news app. I stay up to date with geolocation tags so I know what's going on my location. And then um, on YouTube, I try to watch things coming out of the New England, out of the U.S., out of anything that kind of revolves around Maine and Maine's bubble. In this case, um, climate change and green energy. So, I try to stay involved in all this, but that doesn't mean that I have any kind of experience or knowledge that someone viewing this channel might not have. What I'm trying to do here on Mainstream Current is allow you to become aware of the different headlines that are out there, the different situations that we're facing as Mainers that you may not be aware of. Because as much as I stay in touch with everything. I still have co-workers and friends that surprise me with things that I somehow didn't know about. So there's a lot that slips through the cracks and here on Mainstream Current I'm trying to fill those cracks. I'm trying to keep there from being voids. I would like to have everyone kind of on the same page because you can't have a logical conversation unless the material is known and understood by everyone. So I'm trying to do that here on this channel. So um, BOEM, which stands for the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, BOEM, grants U.S.'s first floating offshore wind research lease to Maine. This is by Power Technology. The lease is expected to generate up to 144 megawatts of renewable energy from 12 floating offshore wind turbines. This article is newer. It came out August 20th, 2024. And um, it's just kind of a very surface level summary of what we're going to be having. Um, A lot of these articles did not go really in depth because it talks about green energy it talks about sustainable it talks about all these these uh virtue signaling terms but no one's really talking about the long-term effects so they these turbines can last 20 plus years but then you have incredible waste from having to get rid of those uh, propellers on the wings. Um, So this is just my first initial reaction. 
I haven't done a whole lot of research. Maybe I've done more research than some of you. I'm sure I've done a lot less than others of you. So there seems to be a lot of pros and cons. Um, I did pull up, let me see if I can find it, the pros and cons list of, of the theory of wind turbines. Um, wind turbines are still fairly new. Uh, we're only going to be having to um, start figuring out what we're going to do to compost them here in the next 10 years. So this isn't a challenge that we've really faced yet, so it's something that we absolutely need to keep in mind when looking to move forward. Because how are we going to claim it's a green endeavor if we're creating that much more waste on the tail end? Not to mention the water and resources that go into constructing these turbines. That has to account for things as well. So here, I just pulled up a generic. This is just AI's, Google AI's summary of a, an overview of the pros and cons. So I'm gonna do further research, but again, this is just to get a taste. So it's renewable. Wind is a renewable resource that's abundant, clean. Wind energy doesn't release greenhouse gases or pollute the air with toxins. Efficient. Wind farms can convert up to 50% of wind energy into electricity. Job creation. Wind power can create jobs and provide income for local communities. Low operating costs. Wind energy has low operating costs. So there you have some highlighted virtue signaling terms, but I was not that convinced when I first read that list. Especially when reading job creation, because most of these endeavors are going to create jobs. So that's just a foregone conclusion. And then my question, my follow-up question would be, okay, you're creating jobs, but for how long? Are they going to go to Mainers or is it going to be from out of state? So just job creation in general is not a convincing argument for me. So the cons, unpredictability. Wind energy is unpredictable. Wildlife threat. Wind turbines can kill birds and bats. Noise pollution. Wind turbines can create low-level noise. Aesthetics. Some people don't find wind turbines aesthetically pleasing. Limited locations. There are limited locations that are suitable for wind turbines. Safety. Wind turbines can be a safety threat to workers installing or maintaining them. Waste. Wind turbines can produce a lot of waste. Maintenance. Wind turbines need regular maintenance to keep them running efficiently. Setup costs. Wind turbines can have expensive setup costs. So again, just to be devil's advocate, there are things in there that I would, that people would argue against, like noise pollution, aesthetics, um, limited location. Those can all be solved by having them 28 miles off the coast in the Gulf of Maine which is what's being presented, proposed. So they're proposing 28 miles out on the Gulf of Maine. So you're not going to have to worry about noise, aesthetics. And then obviously it's not a limited location if there is suitable coastline all down Maine and 28 miles out, most people are not going to see it. However, you do have cruise ships and you do have lobstermen and other seafaring um, fishers, so fishermen. And from my studies in here, it seems as if most lobstermen and most individuals that spend time out to sea do not support these offshore wind turbines. That alone has to say, that has, alone has to speak some volumes because lobstering here in the state of Maine is a highly sought after um, produce uh, product. So that has to be kept in mind when we're talking about this. Um, I have some other articles here. It breaks it further into pros and cons. Well, actually, most of them don't raise up uh, pros and cons. Most of them just offer up how it's good for us and how it's good for our green agenda. But you have to keep in mind that there are two sides to every coin, and this coin seems to have a fairly dark side that has not been explored to the extent that I think it should be if we are going to put ourselves as a state of Maine on the forefront of wind energy. 
Um, we know that it kills a lot of birds and bats, and that will still affect animals out to sea, even 28 miles out. Um, we need to worry about waste, the waste that's created by creating these wind turbines and the waste that's created after these wind turbines are done. Um, the wind turbines are said to generate enough electricity within the first few months to pay for themselves. So if that is the case, then that also needs to be kept in, um, in the loop. So I didn't come up here with any profound um, understanding of wind turbines that any of you guys are likely to are likely to have um i don't know that any of us have the answer but what i do want to do is start digging into it and start looking into what is coming in our future and whether it's beneficial or not and we can't just get caught up in the moment okay green energy right now is a trendy hot topic but will that still be the case years down the road with what we know and is it the smartest decision or should we take our time, evaluate what we have already and go from there? Because the worst thing would be to jump into one boiling pot, to jump into a boiling kettle. It doesn't matter where you're at if you're boiling. So before we have any more issues arise, why don't we take a step back, slowly evaluate what we have and figure it out? Because even if we do make these wind turbines in the next year and a half, what is that really going to do for our long-term climate impact? Or do we have a, a moment to sit back and say, hey, let's take another year, let's look at this, let's study it as if we're going to do it, but then let's really let the evidence and the data speak for itself and go from there rather than just nose diving into potentially another pitfall that's just my understanding that's just where i'm coming at so far i want to know your comments leave those down below make sure to leave a oh that's an awful heart <laughs> make sure to leave a thumbs up sign and go ahead and subscribe if i have earned your subscription I just want to bring to light things that are going on that impact your life that may not be reported from a point of view that you agree with. And you don't need to agree with me. But what I do hope is that I enlighten you to what's going on around you so that you yourself will go out and do some of your own research. That's all I hope to accomplish here. So happy researching, y'all. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Your first initial thoughts and then maybe follow up with some of your own research and that'll help me know where to go from videos from here on out. Uh, this is not going to be the only video on wind turbines. Uh, it's just my initial one. This is where I'm kind of laying out the different questions that I have, the different initial research, and then from here together we can travel and see what we can learn. I'm trying to keep these videos shorter so on that note y'all have a great night. Until next time.